I'm smirking at you why? because you are clearly being dishonest. Again, you're smirking. You can explain why. <laughs> Of course, I'm smirking. It's funny the way in which you always frame things. People are not intimidated by you. That's the problem. You can intimidate some of your own people, but you can't intimidate us. I that don't want to intimidate anybody. I want to get to the. That yeah, I want to find out. That I'm gone. just fascinated. Okay, so don't be silly. An Iranian professor humiliated Piers Morgan on his own show, leading to career ending embarrassment to Piers Morgan. How would you categorize what happened on October the 7th? Was that a terrorist attack? No, it was a retaliation of a people who were imprisoned and who were starved and who were regularly battered and people who were imprisoned. Do you who think, belonged just, to be, just to be clear, just to be clear, you, you think that the slaughter of 1,200 people, the raping, the maiming, the incinerating, the mass murder that went on that day by a group whose own spokesman, the Hamas spokesman, said days after that on television, on camera, that Hamas was wedded to committing the same act again and again and again as often as it could, which actually is the purest personification of the genocide that you're talking about, you don't condemn that. You're being dishonest. There is no evidence. No, I'm not. There's no evidence of rape. And I ask your viewers. Absolute to look nonsense. At, That's yes, nonsense. There's, it's absolute nonsense that there's systematic rape. And if you are being dishonest intentionally, you are helping the Israeli regime continue its genocide by justifying it through dishonesty. So that's up to you to decide. There is no evidence of systematic rape. And just like the beheading. There has been clear lies, reported evidence of rape and sexual abuse against I refer Israeli you, women. Clear. I, I refuse, Demonstrable I refuse, evidence. I refer you and your audience to the good work carried out by people at the Gray Zone, at the Electronic Intifada, based in the United States. Many of them are people of excellent, they're excellent reporters, and you should invite them on your show to talk about these allegations. No, I've talked to top reporters who've covered this. Well, I'm also interested that you only, you, well, I'm, you I'm, I'm, also that you only I'm also interested, Professor, that you only want to deny that there was rape. You don't want to deny the incineration or the beheading or the mass murder of Holocaust survivors, the kidnapping of several hundred people, including babies. I mean, do you condemn any of that, or do you think all of that is justified? Look, Pierce, you're trying to play with words, and that's fine, as long as you're not well, trying to with? just... Well, you're playing because there is no evidence of beheadings. You're just taking the dishonest Israeli regime's account, which they have no evidence, and people have written articles no, no, there about there was this. demonstrable, proven evidence that people were beheaded. Provable yeah, evidence. And so more, than, more than that, we know from Hamas's own video coverage of what they were doing in real time that they proudly broadcast to the world. They didn't try and hide this. I'm just curious why you, who is so no, incensed I'm, by what you see as Israeli, Israeli genocide, why you would not be equally incensed by genocidal behavior from Hamas that day. No, you're not being honest. And where did they broadcast this footage of beheadings of Hamas to the world? Can you put it right now where you no, have no, a I didn't say right they now. broadcast the beheadings. There was evidence found of people who'd been beheaded. That was not broadcast. But Can what you was show the broadcast footage? was Can the, the was the was the one I didn't say there was footage of the beheading. I said there was evidence found that people had been beheaded, right? But I would also say to you that what was broadcast by Hamas the of them of them I, of Hamas slaughtering people and kidnapping people. I'm proudly boasting about it. It's something you seem to be smirking about. I'm, I'm just smirking curious at what you. you feel. I'm smirking at you Why? because you are clearly being dishonest. If there were people, innocent people anywhere, whether in Palestine or elsewhere, who were killed by a soldier, by anyone, that is, of course, unacceptable. But these claims of systematic rape, these are dishonest claims. There is, people have done hard work to prove that there is no evidence for these systematic rapes and beheadings. And these were used as propaganda to justify the beginning of this Holocaust in Gaza. And those who continue to make these You see, you talk about me being dishonest, Professor. You talk about me being dishonest, but what you've just said is an absolutely shocking example of dishonesty. Hamas didn't even try to hide what they did. They made they no secret it. of their delight, their joy, their pride in what they were doing. Some of them rang family members back in Gaza to boast about what they'd just done to old women, to children. And I'm just curious why you can't find yourself in, in a, able to in condemn day, it. Piers, in the day and age when everyone has cameras and their cameras all over the place, mm. show us the evidence. Show us the evidence, especially in Israel, especially in Israel, which is a society which has cameras all over the place. But you don't have footage of any beheadings and you don't have any footage of any rape. I wonder why. Well, there were bodies why. found who had been beheaded. That is a fact. So, OK, show them on your show them all that all the, these bodies that have been beheaded. Show them on your show. Show those pictures. How many, people, like, how many people do you think were killed that day? I think roughly at between 1,100 and 1,200. Many of them were soldiers. So you accept, many you of accept them there were... was a mass slaughter. Does that constitute genocide to you? Is that an attempt at genocide? No, it's like you saying that the French resistance, which was operating against the Nazis, and they go and carry out an operation. And during that operation, some children are sadly killed. So you say, oh, so the whole French resistance is illegitimate and the Nazis occupation is legitimate. That's nonsense. If, as I said, very clearly, wherever an innocent person is killed, that I condemn, everyone condemns, and I wish you would condemn, because a genocide is taking place, and you are putting forward claims without the justification to make them, without the evidence to make them. I would refer you again to those websites and those reporters and journalists who've proven that the claims were inaccurate, to say the least, and dishonest, most probably.
What is the view from Tehran about what's happened here? Uh, the view from Tehran is quite clear. You know quite well, I know quite well, your viewers know quite well, that the Israeli regime is carrying out genocide. And this stems from ethno-supremacist ideology. It stems from apartheid, and this is unacceptable. And the people who lived on that land, they have been expelled. The people in Gaza, they live in a concentration camp, now a death camp. And the West has brought about this situation. Whatever crimes that they've committed against Jews and gypsies and Slavs, they have to pay for it themselves. They can't take it out on the Palestinian people. So the Iranians, along with almost everyone else in the world, except for some people, people in your part of the world believe that the apartheid regime has to come to an end. And by coming to an end, it means that all people of that land have to be able to live as equal human beings. I know that sounds very crazy, but ethno-supremacy isn't a good thing. But the position of the Iranian regime is that Israel shouldn't exist, right? Well, the position of the British regime is that Israel as an apartheid state should continue to exist. The position of the American regime is well, that know, Israel... No, if you could, look, that wasn't the question I asked you, but is the position I'm of answering. Iran's regime... I'm answering. That is, I'm, but, yeah, but what is the answer to that question. I'm getting there. The position of the American regime is that apartheid should continue. Iran's position on South Africa had the same gap. There was the same gap back then when the British and Americans supported apartheid in South Africa and racial supremacism in the South African regions, in Zimbabwe today and so on. Back then, Iran was supporting indigenous population. Back then, Iran supported the ANC. Back then, Iran supported the military wing of the ANC and Nelson Mandela. Yeah, but we're not talking about South Africa. I'm talking about what is Iran's regime's current position in relation to Israel? The Iranians believe that Israel does not have moral legitimacy as an apartheid regime. And the only way that it can gain legitimacy is that if apartheid is cast aside, if ethno-supremacism is cast aside, if racial and religious discrimination in the sense that Muslims and Christians are lesser human beings and they don't have any right to the land that they've been on for hundreds of years, that should be set aside. People who have been expelled have the right of return. It's not very complicated. It's not, as you say, rocket science. Iran has had a vested interest in supporting terror against Israel for a very long time. No, I think the regimes that have a vested interest in supporting terrorism are the ones who are giving the Israeli regime the weapons to carry out genocide. And the genocide began long before October the 7th. And the Gaza Strip was a concentration camp long before October the 7th. You know as well as I that October the 7th didn't occur in a vacuum. And the terrorism has been carried out regularly by the Israeli regime on the Palestinians of the Gaza Strip for, for decades. It regularly bombed them and killed them. And it's not just the Gaza Strip. I think roughly 400 Palestinians have been murdered in the West Bank over the past six months. These, these are regular occurrences, but it doesn't register in the West because, again, the Israelis are a European. It's a European colony. They have priorities over the brown people of the land. But it is a fact that Palestinian children, according to the statements made by senior Israeli officials, Palestinian women, according to members of the Knesset, they are lesser people. If you look at the South African complaint, they clearly point out the views of these people and the starvation siege and the intention to starve the people of Gaza, women and children. That is because they look at them as inferior people. This is not about two armies. This is about a subjugated people trying to stand up for their rights. So don't be silly. The Israeli regime, they're always lying, just like the Al-Shafa hospital. They're full of underground tunnels. Where were the tunnels? And then at the beginning, when they struck the Al-Heli hospital and killed hundreds of people, they said, no, it was the resistance. And the Western intelligence agencies said the same thing. And then we saw them hit hospital after hospital after hospital after hospital. So you put your faith in the narrative of these child killers who bomb hospitals and destroy the very basis of humanity, the very basic needs for ordinary people in Gaza. The Holocaust continues as we speak today. When the president of Brazil and other world leaders say what the Israeli regime is doing today to the people of Gaza is just like what the Nazis were doing in Germany, no one is going to forget because the Iranians retaliated. If Israel does strike Iran, it has a far more sophisticated and powerful military capacity. And if America was to defend it against any further retaliation of the kind that you're describing, then Iran would get wiped away, wouldn't it? I mean, you can't possibly compete with the combined military firepower of countries like Israel and America. Why would you pretend otherwise? That's your wishful thinking. The Israeli regime regime is vulnerable and weak, and it has shown itself to be incapable of taking a dot on the map. They haven't been able to take Gaza after six months of genocide. They haven't been able to take even northern Gaza after six months of genocide. They have to withdraw at least 100 to 200,000 people from northern Israel because they cannot stand up to Hezbollah. They cannot push Hezbollah back. They cannot defeat them. So you think the Israeli regime is going to defeat Iran? Your media outlets in the West have been misleading the people for two years now, saying Ukraine is winning, Ukraine is winning. Suddenly everyone is saying Ukraine is falling apart. 
dishonest narratives and reporting dishonestly to your own people ultimately hurt the people of England and Europe and the United States. And your endless wars based upon this nonsense and this misinformation lead to huge waves of refugees. And then the people of Europe feel overwhelmed by these refugees that you yourself brought upon yourself. When the West continues to support the atrocities carried out by the Israelis, when the West openly supports an ethno-supremacist regime, and when the West supports a genocide, the public across the region is turning not only against the Israeli regime, but against the West. A few families who are ruling over countries are not public opinion. And ultimately, by pursuing this, they are creating a rage that they cannot stop in future. And just one final point on a personal note. I experienced what the West does to the non-Western world. When your governments were supporting Saddam Hussein, when your governments were arming him in the 1980s, before you turned against him, your governments gave him chemical weapons. I survived two of those chemical weapons attacks. I survived both mustard gas and I survived nerve agents that were provided by Western governments of Saddam Hussein. And many people did not survive. The intentions of Western regimes are not benign. Your governments have done nothing but ruin and destruction for our part of the world and for much of the rest of the world. And now, because of the mess that you've created across the board, you're now ruining the lives of your own people.